another web show so soon after last week's. You've been knocking them out, haven't you? Left and right. Literally fantastic interviews galore. I know. Well, this week it's a very creative, artistic web show. Uh, also relating to this. You might have heard of Flash Gordon, the movie, and you might have heard of the documentary about it, Life After Flash. Life After Flash appears on this box set, and you can also get it on another Blu-ray and DVD available from Life After Movies. Sorry, where was that available from again? Life After Movies. No, but in all seriousness, Matt Ferguson is an artist who did this cover. Oh, so I wish I could draw. I mean, this guy's work is incredible. We were poring over the website of all the different designs he's done, and they are just Amazing. Can I talk about my favourite one? You can talk about your favourite one. Uh, I love the movie They Live, hence this. And he did an absolutely incredible poster that we've actually ordered. It's amazing. I've already got the spot in the house ready for it. In fact, he does a whole series of John Carpenter films that I'm a massive fan of. And just hats off. I mean, just incredible work. Um, I can't even draw a stick, man. <laughs> I know. Well, we're so incredible fans of, of Matt Ferguson. So I was very excited when he said yes to an interview on the web show. So let's get straight into it, Matt Ferguson. Today's guest on the web show, incredibly talented. You probably know his name, but you will definitely know his artwork. Also a fellow 80s film lover, Matt Ferguson is here. How are you today, Matt? Hello, uh, I'm okay, thank you, yeah, not bad. Well, first of all, for the audience who may not know your actual career path or what you've done before. Tell us who you have worked with, who you work with now, what is what is it you do for a living? In general, I'm I'm an artist, but I'm, I make um, film posters. I guess I'm known most for doing sort of Marvel, but I also do posters for lots of 80s films and because I started out doing work in the sort of alternative movie poster scene and then it's all just sort of led on to all sorts of things. So yeah, Marvel's probably the key. Backtrack to kind of the beginning then, um, did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? You, I imagine, had this like amazing talent from a very early age. How did your career kind of progress? I've always been sort of artistic and I've always liked drawing pictures and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but I kind of got dissuaded at school when I failed um, my A-levels in art and basically just stopped doing it. I started out when I was about 17, uh, making sort of um, skins and textures for computer games, like uh, just sort of by myself on my own. And then that sort of didn't go anywhere. Then I did a film degree for a bit, which I also failed. And then I, <laughs> I made a picture of Samurai Jack for uh, my now wife, she was my girlfriend then. And they were, everybody was like, wow, you should do more of this. So I did more. And then like a few months later, I did an Avengers poster and that led straight into working. My first ever job, proper job was on the, was on the Avengers. So. so was that just a one-off commission or had you been hired by the, the company to do more at that stage? I did the posters off my own back and put it online and they saw it. Mark Ruffalo wanted a copy of it. And then I guess that must have gone around the offices and stuff. And then they hired me to do artwork for the box set, the Marvel box set. That was sort of spun off from that initial Avengers poster that I did. So when you get a commission, do you, do they just kind of, do you see the film and you have free reign? Do they give you design briefs? Like what is your kind of process from when you get asked to do a poster? Well, I guess I'm, I'm quite lucky because I'm, I, I think when I get hired, people hire me because they want me to do something in my style. And it's quite, it's like the alternative poster scene. So they sort of usually just go, do what you think is best, <laughs> which is quite good. But then you always have parameters because obviously like with a film poster, uh, there's likeness rights, there's this, there's that. So you can kind of get approval to do everything when you're doing it officially. And then that can change things. But yeah, no, most of the time they just kind of let me do what I want-ish. Do you tend to have um, inspiration pretty quickly or do you like have to go through a few iterations before you kind of get your final one? Nine times out of 10, it's quite quick inspiration because it's usually something that I like. So like if I'm doing something like Flash Gordon poster, I love that movie. So I kind of like just do my dream version of that what I would like to see so that's kind of like what I, that's my kind of 
one rule is would I like it? What do I want it on my wall? So I just try to do that. Well, I have, speaking of, that epic, also plug for the box set, it's amazing, Studio Canal, um, epic poster artwork. I also picked up your one of your Flash Gordon Vice pins that you were doing. Um, yes. You have a pretty interesting Flash Gordon story that I know you have told before, but I would love to hear it again. Is it about how I was born at home? It certainly is. Okay. So I was born at home in 19, Christmas Eve 1983. And the reason why I was born at home was because it was the premiere, the, the TV premiere in the UK of Flash Gordon. And my dad really wanted to watch it. And I was the third child that they had. And so they, my mum was sort of like, oh, it's fine. It'll be fine because... She'd done it all before. And anyway, things happened really quickly. <laughs> and so then I was born at home to Flash Gordon. And then that story kind of like got put about. And then we watched Flash Gordon every year. A really important film to me because of that. I mean, the 80s were an exceptional decade for everything, especially movies like clothes, TV shows. Um, what is it, what films did you grow up with that you absolutely still love today from the 80s? Well, there's lots, obviously, but Flash Gordon is right up there. Transformers, the movie, the 1986 animated film. I was obsessed with that film. I used to rent it from Ritz Video every week. I like fantasy films. I so like um, Labyrinth, um, The Dark Crystal, Willow. I a real thing for that because we like Lord of the Rings. Uh, our family used to listen to the to like the old um, radio show of Lord of the Rings and then fantasy stuff was a big part of my, me growing up. So yeah, I loved all those never ending story. That was another one like Flash Gordon where we were just obsessed with it and it scared me so much, the, the wolf. I've not seen it in ages, but there's the painting, there's the paintings of everything happening, isn't there? I can remember this. It's like the story and Atreyu seeing the story. And then there's the painting of the wolf in the wall and then the wolf is in the wall. Oh my God. Why do you think the 80s was so brilliant? I think it's sort of like, if I think about it in terms of a timeline, it sort of keys off of what happened in the 70s with Star Wars, where there was that explosion in um, genre films and special effects. And there's it, sort of like a sort of one-upmanship going on in the 80s. So as, as the decade goes on, they just got more and more wild, but they still had sort of like a handmade feel to them they were less designed by committee so like a film like something like labyrinth which is david bowie singing with puppets wouldn't necessarily get made today because i think somebody would probably go that's just silly what you do also when you describe it like that it sounds pretty stupid exactly but then they made it and it's brilliant so that's kind of why the 80s they kind of like just they didn't seem to have a filter for a lot of the films they just did what, whatever they wanted and it, it shows in the films because they're just they last they've really lasted a lot of those films good thing with 80s films like the goonies was that they didn't hold back for the sake of children you know like we watch these films and there's horrible things happening in them and they're really freaky and scary like um return to oz and films like that <sighs> that's that's the, that's why they're good so going back to your art and i'm very naive when it comes to like knowing how to do art apart from like with a pen and a piece of paper how what is your actual technical process for like do you hand draw it and then you put it in a computer like how do you how do you get it from your brain to a finished product so i used to be a sort of traditional artist but then with the computer games where i used to work for computer games i taught myself photoshop which isn't really just photoshop you're not editing photos so i have like a pen and you draw one to one on the screen but even then that can't quite be drawing by hand so i'll often do sketches and thumbnails to start off with by hand because it's a much faster way to get your ideas down onto paper and, and you you sort of know whether it will work or not. Because of the way that works used nowadays, I do it all digitally because you do a poster for somebody, but it's not just that poster. They'll want to do it on the DVD. They'll want to use it on a banner on Instagram. So you've got all the different elements and you can quickly rejig it into a different format. So that's kind of like the, the good thing about digital. But it's also quite difficult to make it look 
like a what I would call a real poster, which is it's not there's <laughs> no such thing as a real poster, but I call it a real poster because it's kind of like in my head the posters that you saw when you were kids, like you drew strews on posters and stuff. So you mentioned Drew Strews and who famously I love the Goonies, so I love his Goonies poster. Oh, yeah. And you did a brilliant Goonies poster, by the way. I think it's amazing. Who inspired you growing up or still today? New artists inspire you? It, like, you didn't know the names then. So Drew Struzan inspired a lot of people, but you, we didn't know his name. We just knew the posters. But there's also, um, there was a poster artist called John Alvin who did a lot of really good posters. He did the Willow poster, Cocoon poster, Arachnophobia. And I think he's probably the key influence on me because... Drew Struzan's like an amazing artist with likeness. So, for example, you've got your Back to the Future poster, which has got that amazing likeness of uh, Michael J. Fox, and it almost looks like a photo until you look properly and you see how amazingly well painted it is. John Alvin did a lot of sort of airbrush work and more scenic, setting a tone with his artwork, and that that's kind of I always keyed more off of that kind of style. So stuff that's pulled back and you see a bit of the environment. So John John Alvin was is probably my number one influence um, and again I didn't know who he was until just a few years ago when um, his wife brought out a book and I was like oh 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 he did that he did that he did that and it's like oh, okay that's the guy <laughs> so when you work on a, um, a, a poster I guess it's, um, how long does it take from inception to having it finished well that all depends really uh, ideally like like a month or, or just forever, really. You just carry on making a poster forever because you don't ever want to give it up. But when you're doing sort of client work, it can be two weeks, which is a very tight timeline. But then that sort of drives you to be really creative. Um, so a deadline is really good. So two weeks to a month from inception to the end, yeah. And then sometimes, sometimes a week and it's like, I can't do it. Which one did you have to do in a week? Uh, I've recently just done one in a week for a TV show, which I can't talk about. But yeah, that was like, well, that was stressful. Uh, and then another quick one was M Empire Strikes Back. I did the 40th anniversary for that and I did that in two weeks. But because you don't have that time, you kind of have to go with your gut more. And so I latched onto an idea and I just ploughed through it. And I actually quite, I actually like that poster. A lot of my posters I look at and I can't, I don't like them. I'm like, what did I do? And you just see everything you did wrong. But that that one, the Empire Strikes Back one, I actually, I actually do quite like. Do you have to work on just one at a time as well? Or do you, can you work on multiple? I usually work on about two or three at, at, at once. And then you can flip between them, which is quite good. Because obviously you can get quite fatigued doing one thing. And you feel yourself, oh, this is, um, so instead of taking a break like a normal person, I'll just move on to one of the other projects that I'm working on, which is maybe not the best way to work, but it's what seems to work for me. <laughs> of all the posters that you have done, what are you most proud of? The one that's had the most impact is that Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Well, the one I'm most proud of is Flash Gordon because of the personal attachment that I have to it and the fact that like, I had to pitch for that job usually people come to me but they 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 contacted me and they said we're looking at some stuff uh, there's a few other artists you know but blah, blah, blah. and so I sort of pitched for it and I really went all in and I and I got that one and because it's so important to me I'm probably most proud of Flash Gordon. What was that pitch process like what were the steps for you to finally get it? Just sort of going going yes I want to do it um telling them sort of stylistically what I would like to do so you show them some of your past work or even other artists work sometimes uh, and just go sort of like this and then the next stage then they, they you would do like a little sort of thumbnail to give them a sort of idea that was totally different though the initial concept for the Flash Gordon was totally different to what we ended up with but uh, yeah we ended up better probably. Did you for that one have a lot of kind of um cooks in the kitchen for that design if it was different or did you just naturally change the way you were going the only um thing i remember them having was they wanted a the sort of bullet style composition so sort of the flash gordon in the middle and then everything sort of shooting off 
But I, I, they let me just do what I wanted. I was like, I need to have Hawkmen, I need to have the Floating City, I need to have this, I need to have that. The only thing that we couldn't do was I wanted to have a, a photo strip. So old posters sometimes would have photo strips where they had like little box outs of the um, actors uh, to show the stars that were in the film. And I thought if I did that, then I could get all the characters in. So like Clyde and Prince Baron and stuff. Um, but like with likeness uh, issues and stuff, that just couldn't happen. So we didn't get a photo strip. That's the only thing. That, that didn't make it on Flash Gordon. Do you come up with a lot of, um, will come up against a lot of rights issues for, I know Flash Gordon is complicated, but for other films, like maybe the Star Wars or Marvel, or do you often just have free reign with everything? How it goes is usually you have free reign to start off with, unless there's any big issues and they go like, you literally cannot draw this guy like with, with Batman, you can't have Michael Keaton's face. So that kind of affects how you're gonna do the poster. But usually what it is, is you do your idea, your initial concept, and then they go, yes, do a bit more. And then it'll go to a different department. So like legal department, and then they'll go, oh, sorry, we can't have that. You can't have the Empire State Building because we don't have the like license to use it. So you just have to sort of figure out how to do a poster with New York without the Empire State Building on, for example. So, yeah. So that's the, the, the only issues from in posters is when there's just legal issues. That's, that's the only, yeah. Are there any movies that you would really love to do a poster for that you have yet to? Well, there's more John Carpenter movies because I'm a big John Carpenter fan. So I would like to do posters for like Big Trouble in Little China and Halloween because uh, I've done a bunch of John Carpenter ones. And then there's obviously all those 80s films that we talked about, because the ones I enjoy doing the most are the 80s films. So like your Willow and Never Ending Story and those, those sorts. Because again, the imagination just runs wild with what you can do. If there are any artists out there, budding artists that want to be doing what you're doing, what advice would you give to them? Mm, well, I can only go off my own experience really. So I would say just be yourself and um put yourself out there i mean with with the way the internet is stuff can get picked up because that's how i how i got my start was being picked up online so you just have to put yourself out there but obviously like a lot of people think i can do this and then sell it but obviously you, you don't have the license to sell stuff so you can do fan art and you just put it online and it's for your own gratification but then if you start selling it you get into sort of legal issues and stuff and that might put off some studios from wanting to work with you that's my that's something i never really did i didn't sell stuff until i started doing it officially do you know of anyone else that has your artwork hanging on their walls i do james gunn has some of my artwork for guardians of the galaxy most of it is i find out about it after the fact there was something really random like the the drummer from anthrax wanted my star wars poster i was like I used to love Anthrax. Cool. Oh, I gave I gave Taika Waititi a poster in person at New York Comic Con. That was really good because he was really funny and nice. Just a really nice man. Does Sam have a copy of your Flash Gordon poster? Yes, he emailed and I almost like had a heart attack, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And I was, <laughs> and I was like, "You have no idea how important you are to me." <laughs> I'm just this random guy who did a poster. Anyway, and then he was just so nice in the email and he was just like, I'd really like to be able to get some. And I was like, yeah. And he, I think he wanted to know like how to get them to buy them or something. I was like, you can just have them. Maybe you'd sign me one. And he was like, oh yeah, of course he'd sign me one. So that was just amazing. I bet your parents were just beside themselves when they found out you were going to do the Flash Gordon poster, I imagine. I think it kind of like goes completely over their head because they're, they're always kind of like a little bit like, oh, that's good. And they don't kind of <laughs> realise. <laughs> Sometimes they get really excited. Like they were excited about the Flash Gordon thing, but it's hard to, I don't know why they kind of, they're just classic parents about stuff. It's like, oh, that's nice. Thanks, mum. Yeah. 
Hi. Um, do you have anything else? You mentioned something that's quite secret, but do you have anything else coming up that you can share or do you not really reveal it until the artwork has been released? Uh, well, I'm usually under NDA, so I can't. Um, but we're working on Transformers stuff at the moment. So that's quite exciting because I love Transformers. Um, and then uh, the other thing is I've got another thing, but I'm under NDA on that. So I can't say. Well, if anyone wants to see more of your art or wants to buy some of your art, where can they go? Just Google my name, Matt Ferguson. That's the best way. Yeah. And I'll come up straight away. Or you can go on my Twitter, which is Cakes and Comics. Yeah, that's about it, really. Just Google me. That works. Well, fabulous. Well, thank you so much for chatting. It has been a pleasure. I am such a fan of your art. Incredibly jealous that you have that skill. Uh, I would love it. Um, and thank you for chatting with me today. It's been lovely. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really nice. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed that chat with Matt. Hope you were inspired by his incredible artwork. You should be. I mean, if, if anybody's got aspirations of how to get into that world, then thank thanks again to him for giving us his insight. It's very difficult sometimes when you're a young aspiring artist to work out how you can actually do it. So chatting to somebody like him or in the past, we've chatted to Alex Ross, some really big names in the, uh, in the world of kind of illustration and design. So hopefully you enjoyed it. A skill we will never have. I know, I don't think you can learn that. I think you've got it inside you and yes, you can grow it and nurture it, but I think he could sit me down for six months and my stick man would still look like a stick man, to be honest. Don't forget to check out all our other videos on the web show. Don't forget to subscribe, comment. What do you think of Matt's art? Do you own his art? Who would you like us to interview on the web show next? Maybe you want to share the video to some high volume sites that you're part of so other people can enjoy these fantastic interviews. Just a suggestion. Until we come back for the next web show, have a great weekend.